Dear students, today's dermatology session is on the topic lichen planus. So here we are not starting with a clinical photograph, but as you can see, we are starting with the photograph of a tree moss or the lichen that grows on the rocks, the trees, etc. Why? Because the lesions of lichen planus exactly mimics that of the tree moss or the lichen, which is why the entity gets this name. So coming to the topic proper. We place lichen planus under a broad category or what is called as a lichenoid dermatosis. In fact, lichen planus is the prototype of this group of diseases called as lichenoid dermatosis. So what are the sites which are affected? It is an inflammatory disease affecting the skin, but just not the skin. It affects the mucosa, the hair and the nail. So that is the most basic thing you need to know about lichen planus. It is an inflammatory disease of the skin, mucosa, hair and knee. Coming to the etiopathogenesis, just know one thing about it. There is an immune damage to the keratinocyte. I hope you understand what a keratinocyte is. It is basically the cells of which the skin is made of. So there is an autoimmune damage to the keratinocyte, which is mediated by the T lymphocytes. Now, for this autoimmune damage to occur to the keratinocyte, there should be a priming agent or there is an exogenous agent which triggers it. Now, what are the triggering agents for this autoimmune damage? It could be a virus like a hepatitis C virus. Because so many cases of hepatitis C, you have an association with oral lichen planus. So, when you have oral lichen planus in a patient, you always screen for hepatitis C. It could be a vaccine like a hepatitis B vaccine. Now another important entity is a contact allergy. See when you have a case of oral lichen planus and you see that the patient is having many dental procedures being done like dental fillings, dental restoration and all that and the patient develops lichen planus of the oral cavity. If you remove all these dental fillings, the patient goes into a remission which means the triggering agent there is that contact allergen which could be the dental restoration materials. So the keratinocytes are being damaged by T lymphocytes but there is an exogenous agent which is enabling the T lymphocytes to do that. It could be any of this, okay? It could be a virus, a vaccine, or a contact allergy. Now, why do we say that this lichen planus is something which is mediated by an autoimmune theory? Why do we propose a theory? Because there are numerous case reports of hepatitis of lichen planus being associated with many of the autoimmune conditions. To name a few, these are the ones which are given in your textbooks. The starting with IBD, the primary biliary cirrhosis, autoimmune hepatitis, so many autoimmune conditions are associated with lichen planus. That is why this theory was being thought of. Now, is there any role for the genetic association, the HLA association? Yes, there is a small role for HLA association because there is a positive family history in some of the cases of lichen planus. But most important thing to remember is it's an immune damage to the skin cells or the keratinocyte. Coming to the epidemiology, here it is a disease mostly affecting adults in the age group of 30 to 60 years. It's not a very uncommon or a rare disease. It affects many, it is a it affects about less than one percentage of the population and it is mainly a disease of the adults. There are cases of childhood lichen planus also, but mostly it occurs in the age group of 30 to 60 years with some of them showing a positive family history. Now there are no racial predilections, there are no gender predilections for the disease. Now how does a patient clinically present? Here we can remember it by a as the P's of lichen planus. Here what is a cutaneous lesion? It is a raised lesion or what you call as a papule. A raised lesion in dermatology is what you call as a papule. So the lesion is a papular lesion. Now what are the other piece to it? It is a pruritic papule, which means the patient will complain of intense pruritus. They will come to you saying that I, I want something which can get rid of my pruritus, which could get rid of my pruritus. That's the only thing I, I need, I need for as my treatment because that's an intensely pruritic condition. They are polygonal. They are 
purplish as you can appreciate from this picture also there is a purplish or a violet shift tinge to the lesion even in the darker skin colors you can appreciate this violaceous color now what are the signs of location and also in this picture itself you can uh, make out they are flat top lesions see they are just flat lesions i would put that also as a p that is they are the plain top or the flat top lesion okay another p now what are the signs affected it usually occurs in the distal extremities one common sign is the wrist this patient is having it is on the wrist then you have the forearm then you have on the distal limbs okay lower back these are the common signs which are affected which means they are all peripherally located so another p so they are papular lesions characterized by the all the p's which you can remember like this so this is a classical lichen planus which we are talking about in this lesions there will be some fine whitish lacy network which you can appreciate over the lesion but usually on a plain clinical examination you may not be able to do it for that need an instrument called as a dermoscope with which you can very well appreciate that whitish network whitish lines which is seen on the surface of these lesions is what is called as a wickham stray an important mcq question for your entrance examination now another interesting phenomenon which you can see in this case is a cobner's phenomenon in fact cobner's phenomenon is classically described in the case of psoriasis but here also you can see what is called as a cobner phenomenon for example in this patient suppose you have some kind of trauma say a scratch or some injury occurring on the patient's skin then after some days you will find that the lesions are like in planus are occurring over this lesion over this trauma site that affecting or that development of new lesion at the site of injury is called as a cobner's phenomenon so that is yet another mcq cobner's phenomenon is seen in say options are like in planus or some other thing you can always choose like in planus but classically it is described in psoriasis so you have a patient with like in planus or you have a patient who with in whom you suspect like in planus but you're not sure say you are not able to appreciate the violaceous color you have some diagnostic confusion in such a case always look for the other sites which can be affected for example so when you are in a diagnostic confusion you are not able to make out that this is not whether it's a really a case of lichen planus always look for the other affected site for example the mucosa in the case of lichen planus mucosa is affected in more than 50 percentage of cases it could be the oral mucosa as well as the genital mucosa now what are you going to see in the oral mucosa this is the picture we are going to see in the oral mucosa see here you can see there are whitish lines or lacy network like this over the buccal mucosa this is the most common finding you are going to get in the oral mucosa there are in fact seven clinical variants of oral lp being described but this is the most common one it's called the reticular form so when in doubt always look for these affected sites now coming to the nail nail is also affected but it is affected only in less than 10 percentage of cases the most common finding you are going to see is this longitudinal ridging this kind of ridges on the nails but the classical finding is this this is called what is called as a pterygium this is a pathognomonic finding of like in planus the pterygium formation even there may be a loss of nail so the common finding would be a longitudinal ridging and even there can be a loss of nail this is a classical finding you see that is a pterygium now is the hair affected we have already mentioned it is a disease of skin hair nail and mucus in case of hair here the follicles are being completely destroyed by the inflammatory process so you have a scarring or a permanent alopecia in the case of lichen planus of the hair so what we have described now is a classical lichen planus which is usually not a very difficult diagnosis to make you will be able to make out all those purplish papules and all that it's a relatively easy diagnosis to make but there are different variants or types of lichen planus which may pose a diagnostic challenge what you need to know at your level is you need to know there are different types of lichen planus 
and try to remember as many names as possible from this list and it's all given in your book. The types are, there can be annular one, atrophic, actinic which means it is on the sun exposed area. This one, the acute or the exanthematous form as the name suggests, there are numerous lesions occurring over a short period of time. Okay. Then you have the bullous one, follicular, linear, pigmented, hypertrophic. Hypertrophic uh, lichen planus is usually seen on the legs where you have large heaped up lesions, many of the ulcerate. So these are the described clinical varieties of lichen planus. Remember as many names as possible. Coming to the differential diagnosis. Clinically, the most important differential diagnosis for lichen planus is yet another lichenoid dermatosis. It is a lichenoid drug eruption, which means the lesions are very much similar to what we have described here. But here it is a form of drug reaction. It is produced by certain drugs like beta blockers, the HCQs, pyrocytes, TNF alpha inhibitors, etc. So the lesions, when the patient is started on any of these drugs, the patient could develop a lichenoid drug eruption with lesions clinically mimicking lichen planus. But one differentiating point is that oral lesion may not be seen in case of lichenoid drug eruption. Now, the other clinical conditions which can come in the differential diagnosis are other dermatological entities like psoriasis, secondary syphilis, pteriasis rosea, and pteriasis lichenoid chronic. So, what do you do? How do you investigate or how do you decide whether this is a case of lichen planus? Lichen planus is one entity where a skin biopsy performing would be definitely fruitful because it has got very specific definitive histopathological features. So a performance of a skin biopsy in case of diagnostic confusion will eliminate most of the confusions. It will help to rule out all the other differentials. And if you find a case of oral lichen planus or if you find a case of ordinary lichen planus also, you may have to investigate for the other underlying or the associated conditions. Most commonly hepatitis. Hepatitis C can be or hepatitis in general is usually looked for. And if clinically relevant other associations like the thyroid, liver etc. has also to be looked for. So the most important investigation would be a skin biopsy. Now what do you see in a skin biopsy? So here in the skin, I don't know how much histopathology you can appreciate, but understand that this, this part here is the epidermis. The skin has got mainly two layers. This is the epidermis. This, this part is the dermis. So what you see here is a dermoepidermal junction. In all lichenoid dermatosis, prototype being the lichen plant, there will be a significant amount of inflammatory infiltrate at this region that is a dermoepidermal junction. So there is a band like infiltrate at the dermoepidermal junction. Along with that, the keratinocyte or the skin cells at the basal layer will be degenerated. That is called as a vascular degeneration of the basal keratinocyte. And that creates a space here which is called as a max use of so this is most striking feature of a lichen planus histopathology is this band like infiltrate with this basal keratinocyte degeneration. Other features are hyperkeratosis, at least you should remember this, wedge shaped hypergranulosis, the so tooth, see, the so tooth shaped retoridges and the apoptotic keratinocyte or the civetae body. These max dose of space civetae bodies they are favorite MCQ questions. But as far as histopathology of lichen planus is concerned, it is the most striking thing is this info point. So you have uh, finally reached your diagnosis. So it's a case of classical lichen planus. So how do you proceed? How do you decide on the treatment? See, this is a self-limiting condition. But what is the duration it takes for the disease to remit by itself? In the case of a cutaneous lichen planus, it takes about a year. And in the case of oral lichen planus, it's going to take longer, say five years or more. And a variant of li oral lichen planus called ulcerative lichen planus, it's going to be a lifelong affection. So, considering the time taken for the disease to remit is really long, the patient would definitely want some kind of treatment. 
so the patient cannot wait with with the scars scratching and all that till that time till the disease to spontaneously remit so you will have to offer the patient some treatment option so how do you decide on it before that always see whether you are dealing with a case of drug induced lichen planus or a lichenoid drug eruption always take the history a proper drug history from the patient has to be taken okay the all the anti hypertensives the beta blockers sizes everything has to be found out and you have to cross consult with their treating physician whether these drugs can be substituted or they can be stopped all those consultations have to be made because that is if you continue the patient on a drug which is produce is likely to produce a lichenoid drug eruption all your treatment options may not really work okay so once you have done all that how do you decide what treatment you are going to offer to the patient for that three things have to be looked for the area of involvement the severity of involvement and the site of involvement whether it's a oral cavity whether it's a skin that kind suppose the patient is not responding to your topical measures or the patient has a more number of lesions then you may have to think of other modes of treatment in this what is going to work is a light based therapy so we have uh, in dermatology light based therapy they are the use of uv light you can either use uvb or you can use uv a uv a one is the one which is commonly used or you can combine the light therapy with a drug that is a puva the soralen p is a soralen soralen plus uva can be combined so once the patient does not respond to topical you can climb up the ladder you can try a light based therapy suppose the patient does not respond to either of these then you may have to think of the third option what are the other options systemic options you can try here also just like the topical corticosteroids systemic corticosteroids are the most important ones to be considered especially when the patient is having an acute presentation you may have to start the patient on systemic corticosteroids most commonly prednisone otherwise if the patient has some other contraindications for systemic steroids you may have to think of other immunosuppressives like cyclosporin methotrexate all the other immune modulating drug even biologicals have to be thought of another class of drug which is going to work with the retinoid especially acetretin so these are the therapeutic options starting from the topical then moving on to light therapy finally the systemic drugs these is the therapeutic ladder you follow in the case of management of lichen planus coming to the complication here the most distressing part about lichen planus is you treat the patient the patient is going will definitely go in for remission the patient gets adequately treated but what is left behind is a striking amount of hyperpigmentation and this hyperpigmentation may take months or years to resolve so this hyperpigmentation in case of lichen planus is very classical very striking and very annoying to the patient now once you treat a case of lichen planus is there a chance of recurrence yes like in planus can recur even if adequately treated what about malignant transformation in case of cutaneous like in planus it's not very common but in case of oral like in planus especially the ulcerative variant of oral like in planus you have to be on a constant watch out for any kind of malignant transformation so this is in short about like in planus now let's uh, recap so if you be asked a short note so this what we have tried to give you is a broad view of the topic in this you can pick out points and put it in the form of a short note so that is what we are aiming at in this session so when you be asked a short note of lichen planus the first thing which should come is it is a prototype of the lichenoid dermatosis okay or the lichenoid eruptions now what are the sites affected it is a basically an inflammatory disease what are the sites affected it can affect your skin the hair the nail and the mucus so this has to be there as your introductory statement now it's your pathogenesis even if you don't remember anything just remember it is a immune damage immune mediated the t cell damage to keratinocyte okay 
So there is an immune mediated damage to the keratinocyte also say about the autoimmune association. Okay. Now coming to the epidermology, it is a disease of the adults affecting mainly the age group of 30 to 60 years. The clinical features uh, describe the classical lichen planus, cutaneous lesions we know, the papillar lesions along with all the P's you have to mention that is say a pruritic, purplish, all those plain top, peripheral, all those things. Mention about Wickham striae, mention about Kogler's phenomenon and always mention about the other findings that is the oral mucosa, the nail and the hair. Okay. Skin biopsy, even if you don't remember every, uh, other all the features of histopathology, mention about the band-like infiltrate that the dermoepidermal junction, the basal degeneration of keratinocyte, the sore toothing of the retiriges. These three points should definitely be there. So the most important differential diagnosis is a lichenoid drug eruption. And regarding the treatment part, always remember the therapeutic ladder. Starting with the topical corticosteroids, moving on to light therapy and finally the systemic corticosteroids. Complications, always remember the pigmentation and the recurrent. So this is in short about lichen planus. At least you should have this much amount of points in your shop. Thank you and we will see you in yet another session. Document.